Now we can just, uh... ah, there we go. So can you hear us now, uh, Dickon? No. Nope. Okay. I can't hear nothing. <laughs> but we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, he's very cynical. Oh, that's always a good, that's always a good yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we can start, I think. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so um, yeah, well, what we'll probably see is that we will have some people join and maybe, oh, now we lost him again. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't being cynical. He just really didn't hear us. He usually is cynical, very cynical. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, at least we knew it worked for a few, for a few, a few minutes at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, what kind of day did you guys have today? Oh, it was a very rainy day. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, we uh, usually it's quite hot. Yeah, know? that's what I, what yeah. I would have expected for this time of year, of course. But yeah, yeah it's still. We have like uh, two days of winter and that's it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which is not too bad to, to have, right? Yeah, no, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had the well, the expected amount of rain today, which is during complete day. So that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Ah, well, let's see. Is he uh, restarting his machine or? Yeah, he is connecting from another computer. Ah, that, that helps as well. And one, and the other thing that he can try is also just use his phone. That's also a possibility. Mm. Just install the uh, Discord app on the, on the phone. Okay, I will tell him. Sorry, everybody, for keep you waiting. Well, no, this is all. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of the game, right? This is all part of the yeah. the, the, char the charm and the allure that we have. It's the beauty of doing things live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so apparently Tesla launched a electric quad. Wow. That is interesting. Like a it's it's like a bike but on four wheels. Yes. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know another quad, like a drone. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different type, type of quad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, electrical, you know. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Oh, wow. This is, this is, this is actually not too bad. Only, oh, only in the US. Oh, too bad. <laughs> only in the US. So oh, that's just going to... Oh, it's too bad. They probably don't even want to ship that to the Netherlands anyway. I guess it will come soon. <laughs> Hopefully, because it, it looks it looks great, but <laughs> it might. It For might. us, it will be arrive uh, like uh, ten years. <laughs> ten years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we might get it in five years, and then in ten years, you guys are uh, <laughs> are up. Yeah. We're always late to the party. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. It looks nice, but it seems to be for something for kids. So it is. Oh yeah, it's uh, the top speeds are five miles per hour and ten miles per hour. Oh well, that's not too bad. The Very maximum, small. yeah, the maximum weight it can carry is one hundred and fifty pounds. Nope, that's not going to be enough for me. <laughs> So for 150 pounds, 75 kilos, yeah, that's, well, that's not going to be, hmm, not going to be enough. So let's see. Now we seem to have uh, totally lost Deckel. Yeah, he's trying to connect uh, from his other computer. So ah, okay, okay. Yeah. You have a lot of computers. Yeah, that's also good. 
Oh, let me just uh, before we before I forget. Uh, so we do have the companion channel, which is a um, just a text channel that we can use to uh, to share links as well. So the first link I'm going to share in the companion channel is of course the well the link to your website as well. So that if we talk about modules that they can see and um, how they look. Great. There we go. And the the one new modules on the website those have haven't been there that long have they? No, they they were launched I think yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here here first, folks. One yeah. new modules from Voices. <laughs> voices. It's, it's voices. actually Voices. Like ah. another voice. Yeah. Voice as oh yeah I can okay. voice yeah. as yeah it, perfect yeah that that well that's already one of the questions how do how what's the proper way to pronounce the the brand name now oh, there, there we have it <laughs> yeah it's it's voices like a lot of voice lo lo voice in plural multiple. <laughs> yeah multiple voices yeah yeah oh, perfect I, I know it's a typo but uh, it's a cool typo no oh, indeed well if it works and if it's special then why not right yeah. yeah. Okay, so you've got this is okay. So that's just a regular two VCA, but the CV and the input is normal. So that's nice. Yeah, you can do um, like a stereo mono to stereo, stereo to mono, everything you like. No, oh, it's that's... very very versatile. That's really nice. And then the other one is a splitter and merger. Oh wow, yeah. I think Deckel is back. And there he is. Yeah. Let's see if it works. We've invited him on stage. And he should already be able to uh, to hear us at this point. Yeah, I'll just see. Mm -hmm. There we go. Third time okay, is the charm. Yeah. We can hear yeah. you, Deckel. How are you? Yay. I'm fine, thanks. Ah, oh, great. Well, splendid that you guys are here. Um, as I was just explaining, uh, we'll have people join in uh, the, the, the room and we might have people seeing that they drop off after a while. So we'll typically see some people just coming in and, and leaving the, uh, the room going forward. We have the text channel, the companion channel, where we can uh, drop links in. And of course, as I said, we are recording this, so we will have the recording uh, on the YouTube channel, uh, typically as early as tomorrow. Um, so everyone, do behave if you uh, <laughs> if you do unmute yourself. <laughs> well, first off, uh, guys, thanks so much for uh, for joining. How have you guys been today? Uh, fine, thanks. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, of course, yeah, it's it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. And um, so, anything, anything modular related happened today, or has this been just uh, one of those days? Um, actually, yeah. I mean, behind the scene, we are just uh, finish uh, design uh, two new models that are upcoming. I think next month, something like that. Oh wow! Great. Yeah, yeah. but more on that, uh, we'll uh, later. Discuss later. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get back to that. Absolutely sure. We will. We will. We will. Perfect. Cool. So, um, what what I like to do, as I said, let's just uh, kick it off, uh, just with some 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 easy questions, and then we might uh, have some of the the audience come in with the real interesting questions later on. Uh, but could you tell me a bit more about how you actually got into music? Uh, uh, during your childhood, what kind of music you were listening to, and how that then evolved into well, modular, and uh, eventually, of course, in founding uh, your company. Yeah. Oh. So, Moti, you go first, and I. Will. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was starting uh, in music like in age uh, sixteen, mm -hmm. uh, starting to play in bass. Nice. And I still, I still play in bass in uh, jazz and uh, fusion bands. Uh, but actually, it started uh, in uh, in the modular world in uh, the five view format. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, after that, uh, introduced Dekel to the, the Eurowork format, and uh, we decided to do a mutual project, like a collaboration. Uh, me and Dekel uh, both uh, had uh, brands. Uh, I was uh, mostly developing uh, MIDI controllers, mm-hmm. and uh, Dekel uh, in, in the audio engineering, uh, mostly. Yeah. Uh, and then we founded the uh, founded voices together i think in the four four years ago decal sound like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so decal your turn yeah so i basically start uh you know kind of producing music uh since i was uh, 16 years old some something like that mm-hmm. and basically i was in uh the see the type of music called the psych ones i don't know if you familiar mm-hmm. with that style mm-hmm. but yeah. lately it's it comes to yeah. Yeah. yeah lately it's uh, coming to the main scene mm-hmm. you can hear that style in huge festivals and you know, like tomorrowland and um, such uh games. yeah yeah uh, so i was producing music for years i think you know just for my friend and my ears then uh, i was uh, signed in a label <coughs> in israel mm-hmm. and then i had a few years of uh, performing uh, in um, mexico brazil uh, my partner goes to japan and austria nice. uh, stuff like that yeah uh, 2012 i stopped with touring got married and start to focus on uh, another aspect in life yeah <laughs> um but uh, still because my background my initial background was uh, electronics i'm i'm a electronics engineer so i always had uh, some relation to music and electronics together so that's connected to what what he said um I start to build some projects to myself, like <clears throat> compressors and EQs and gears like that. And then when I met Moti, uh, we start to collab on, uh, the, collab on the first model. Yeah, it was the very, very far. It's shortened of a uh, variable L4. Mm-hmm. And since then we work together. Great. So how, how did you guys meet? Was that by chance or? We have a lot of mutual friends. Ah, of yeah. course, yeah. Yeah. Basically on Facebook, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a small country. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In that regard, yeah. Then especially if you're into music. So um, I, am, I am interested, though, with the, the difference. Well, let's call it musical backgrounds, as you said, uh, Morty coming more from a jazz point of view and then a decal you from from a trans uh, or at least a EDM background so how did that how did that came to be how, how what kind of fusion was that for you I mean when you producing the music like uh, trans or dance music mm-hmm. uh, it's almost 100 percent digital i mean it's synths and samplers and stuff like that so basically you have to use synthesizers or mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. plugins i don't know back then there was not so much uh, many plugins available yeah so you was have to own some synths some hardware synths mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I remember I purchased my first synth was a uh, Access Virus, the first version. I think <laughs> people call it Virus A. Yeah. And I still own it. Oh, great. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how we become into the synth life. You know? mm-hmm. in, so that, that was your very first one, yeah. Yeah. In my, you know, music relation, it's have to related to synths. So yeah. And and how how is that for you, uh, Moti? Um, going from a bass as a bass yeah. player, getting into synthesizers, and then into uh, modular. 
when I started uh, when I started to produce uh, music that is not my own yeah uh, so the the usage of a synthesizer is uh, pretty inevitable mm-hmm. uh, but I al- always use uh, like uh, you know the plugin with the preset I didn't know what the knobs do <laughs> <laughs> like everyone uh, but uh, actually a mutual friend of ours uh, was building synthesizers and uh, the first time uh, I was coming to his house and uh, open a synthesizer that he built mm-hmm. and yeah. also seeing the electronic inside and, and no electronics uh, me and Dekel both are uh, engineers by trade yeah. uh, but I didn't know how the the sound was make made yeah so uh, it p- was re- pretty interesting so i started uh, to do uh, some kits you know uh, music for all the space and uh, mm-hmm. you know the style yeah. ray wilson uh, and then started to uh, to, to build uh, the 5v format and then downgrade uh, i don't know if i have to say downgrade but a mm-hmm. downsized yeah uh, to the euro euro rack format yeah and then it really yeah. picks up of, of, uh, picks up of course yeah yeah you know th- this this uh this niche but uh we also bought a lot of synths my first synth was uh, like a mini boot mm-hmm. uh, it was a great uh, bass synth uh, yeah but but you know you, you have to do a uh, lo- much louder things absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. of course of yeah. course so what what then really drives your um, your combined designing of your modules? How do you des- how do you guys decide uh, what your next module is going to be? Basically, uh, uh, from needs. Um, me and Dekel uh, sits. Uh, we actually uh, design all the the process together, mm-hmm. from the electrical design, the breadboard designs. Uh, we have uh, actually a few uh, digital models that we are designing right right, right now, mm-hmm. and uh, all the process is done together. Nice. Uh, but it's basically driven from uh, needs, I think. They can so, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so it's mo- mo- mostly inspired by what, with, with your personal needs, what you ne- need in your music production, or yeah. Great. Plus, we have some uh, future uh, release models. Uh, it's based on in some, I don't know, 10 years ago, something like that. I was making uh, synths and effects in a reactor software. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we pull some ideas from those plugins and we will we start to bring them into the analog world. Yeah, the reductor was like this. Yeah. Uh, we developed the reductor from a reactor patch. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. actually, that, I, I didn't know that, yeah. yeah. And there is one more uh, huge uh, model that we can't uh, give much details about because, you know, we want to finish the mm-hmm. prototype at least yeah but it's something special i think oh yeah can you can you can you can you let us in on, on some little secrets or is it still on the total uh, uh total secrecy or <laughs> total, total darkness the, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm top interested. Secret, it's top secret. Now, then, then we'll just leave it yeah. at that, and then we'll uh, make sure that everyone keeps an eye on the uh, on the, on the Voices website for the coming months. And uh, I, I, I certainly know I will, and make sure that we uh, keep an eye on that because I'm always interested to see uh, what's what's happening in the future. Thank so, um, if you um, if if you guys take a look at your current um, well your, your current catalog, uh, what would you say is your most popular module? I think the Led Rover is the best seller for now. Mm -hmm. That's why we we working on a new uh, sets of rovers. Mm -hmm. We have the multi rover that we announced about it uh, last week. It's stereo multi band Led Rover. 
with plenty of TV controls and it sounds pretty amazing. Oh, wow. I think, yeah. The Land Rover as is, is uh, becoming to be a stereo unit. Like the reductor uh, in, that, uh, in, that, in that regard, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Mark II will be will be like a stereo unit, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and there is a third yeah. edition, like a micro edition, will be much slimmer model, and it will be mono unit with a, not too much uh, extension or something like that. Oh, wow. The basic, yeah, it's it will be very basic, like the the original uh, yeah. design. Yeah, uh, with a few tweaks here and there, uh, mm. it will be the same sound as uh, the current Land Rover, uh, but much uh, greedier, Ooh. much more aggressive. Uh, this is what uh, our users uh, were ask asking for. Oh wow! Uh, to yeah. be much more aggressive, it, but it will be. It will. Um, I don't know how to say it. It will be uh, a very uh, saturation. Um, so really breathes into the distortion uh, range. Yeah, also, I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 perfect, yeah. perfect. I love that. It will be also <laughs> overdrive, uh, saturation, and distortion if needed. Ah, awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I love, I love distortion. I've got, um, I've had the chance to work with. Uh, I think, I think up until now, something like. Uh, five or six different distortion units and every distortion unit or every overdrive unit that I work with everything has its own character its own sound its own its own well fatness I would almost want to describe it as and the the bulk that that adds to your sound it's always amazing so I'm uh, yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to hearing that perfect and um, it, and that's probably going to be your defining way forward, of course. The these kind of uh, effects, like like the reductor and then the let rover and and its um, and its offshoots, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we kind of aiming. We are trying to aiming uh, on the effects aspects of the models, less uh, sound source. Yeah, at, at this point. At least. But is that still so, something that you think you might be uh, looking into uh, in the future, or is it is it something that you say, well, we have, we are just going to be committed to doing the effects or the uh, the post processing no, no. sorts? Yeah. No, it's not a no permanently uh, decision. We had actually a superstar model that uh, we actually it also had some uh, sounds demo uh, to to the media and it was basically made of eight so oscillators independently great each oscillator have uh, its own cv and its own f modulation input and they can be synced each pair can be synced together and stereo output you know you can split the voices between left and right and make mm. detune uh, but we stop the stop with it currently because we wanted to focus on other stuff. Uh -huh. uh, maybe we will uh, bring it back. I don't know. It's kind of done, you know. The, the the UI, the UX, everything is done. The electronic side is done, and it sounds amazing. But maybe we will bring it back someday. I'll keep my fingers crossed for that. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's actually the the first uh, super analog super so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of that course, amazing. Yeah, because technically yeah. these super souls are typically all digital, of course. Yeah. Well, when, yeah, and then so. of course, uh, and that brings me also to the next question, and that is, well, with with the complete well problems in the supply chain for chips and the whole shortages that are happening right now, how are you guys dealing with that? Is that sometimes in some way affecting your roadmap or are you making different choices now that you are, wouldn't have made uh, otherwise? Or Like every every manufacturer in the industry is affected. 
Absolutely, uh, yeah. We stopped uh, the development of uh, our digital models. Mm -hmm. uh, that if if we didn't have uh, the the IC shortage, uh, we would definitely will release a few yeah. uh, of our uh, digital. Uh, but it only affects us on the digital realms. Uh, in the analog, it doesn't affect us at all. We don't have uh, like a super unique. We have a few unique uh, ICs, but it's, it's not super unique. Okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So how do you then see um, the company evolving in the next couple of years? Uh, do you think that you'll stick to uh, Eurorack only, or do you see yourself moving back to other uh, ranges as well? We do have uh, some collabs in the future uh, for the Pro Audio. Mm -hmm. uh, Pro Audio uh, gear. Uh, we started from the Pro Audio. Yeah. Uh, so we can uh, we can elaborate later on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, we think on the Pro Audio and uh, build a synth full full synth uh, of our own. Like a desktop synth or yeah yeah. Oh, really interesting. That that would be something that I would uh, <laughs> I would love to see, of course, because uh, from what I've what I've so as mentioned to people who don't know yet. I will be reviewing some of the uh, voices modules uh, going forward and um, from what I've seen up until now of the actual sounds and of course the well the, the, the sounds that, that have been made with your modules I'm really impressed so I think that a, a standalone desktop synth developed by you uh, would be very interesting and I think that that would be very well received going forward. Thank you. At the hour, well, well, it's it's <laughs> it's. I don't want to put any pressure on you guys, but I think that that would be <laughs> no pressure, no, no pressure at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but that is, of course, something that you do see uh, happening in the industry going forward. There is there is a lot of your yeah. rack, uh, module makers that are new now also making sure that they can take on. Uh, other things like desktop scenes or uh, related gear too. Is that something where do you see that that is because the the niche for Eurorack is, is it's still expanding, but it's not expanding exponentially. But you do want to make, move into other areas too, or no? I don't think uh, it's you know we planning to develop uh, some gears like. Uh, Pro Studio Gears, mm -hmm. not because the uh, Eurek is kind of niche, mm -hmm. because it's, uh, it's what we're um, excited about. Yeah, again, out, out of necessity, you start focusing on those things. Exactly. And uh, actually, me and Dekel are, uh, we are a gear holder. So every, <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of gear. <laughs> In, uh, in our studios so uh, we want to develop uh, more gear for us and then sell <laughs> <laughs> I think that is true for um, for almost uh, every yeah. every person that I know within the Eurorack sphere they're all hoarders they all want to collect as many synths as they can it's all about the gear acquisition syndrome right yeah 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 well, exactly. perfect perfect and and well, for me, this is this is something I don't know anything about. But could you could you share a bit more about what the uh, the modular scene is in Israel? Um, how that how big is it? How prevalent is that? Uh, do you have great shops where you can go to and uh, pick up your next modules, or even not one? Oh, jeez, yeah. no. So you have to uh, import <laughs> everything from Europe then, or yeah. Oh. There is one importer, I think, but he worked with the specific uh, brands. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no, you know, such a store like you have in the, all over Europe almost. Mm -hmm. You can go into the store and you see walls over walls of models and you can check the sound and mm -hmm. decide before you buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed. For, uh, for us in Israel, our showroom is YouTube, you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. We do have a great yeah. uh, community mm -hmm. in yeah. Israel. Uh, the community in Israel is very united, you know, yeah. very supporting. And... 
Oh, that's good. That's, that's amazing. Happy to hear. Yeah. I think that is true globally. And whether you, which country you talk to, everyone has this this great unique sense of belonging within the Eurorack scene, and that's something that brings everyone together. Whether you're creating ambience, whether you're creating EDM or techno, everyone does belong to that greater Eurorack tribe. I've got the feeling. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Um, so one of the things I always like to discuss as well is, because I am a bit cognizant of the, of the time, of course, is if you were to look back to where you were before you started Voices, um, what would be your number one piece of advice you would give yourself uh, back then? Uh, on Modula or uh, as a maker? <laughs> Maybe even both. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, uh, on modular to be focused, because uh, I personally, when I started modular, like uh, three weeks uh, in the making, was uh, having a full wall of modules. <laughs> so, wow! <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> because the DIY is uh, very accessible. Uh, yeah. You know, when you have the you know the chips and uh, everything. Uh, but uh, I think to be focused, more focused, mm -hmm. uh, but as a maker, uh, we learn along the way. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, f and for you, Deco? Uh, if you, I know, if someone listen and it's gonna, and he want to be a maker or a official company, um there is some bumps in the start you know at the beginning of the way yeah so take it easy everything is good yeah if you put yeah. attention on customer service yeah see that's our main focus on as a company mm -hmm. we had a case that one of uh, our uh, retailers said that one of his customers bring back a module and it smells like pee and the customer <laughs> said something about i don't know <laughs> something <laughs> happened there. i don't know what yeah. but something happened so as a company we're trying to be uh, supported as we can yeah um, yeah well i did but... one time have a module and that smelled completely like whiskey so what my assumption was is that while it was traveling to to the netherlands from the us that it was well packed together right next to a big bottle of scotch somewhere and that it broke during transport and that's why it's, it smelled like like uh <laughs> like maybe whiskey. the model had stopped in the duty free and uh, buy a few <laughs> whiskeys you know it's good <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be, but I've never had a module actually smelling like pee. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, yeah. But it's but unfortunate. We, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we, we also have a very, very extensive warranty, so uh, everyone that buys our module is covered. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my module smells funny. That's like the, the, <laughs> the, the interest, most interesting thing that you can say about a module, of course. Yeah. So what, I, what I'd like to do is uh, we've, got, uh, we've got some people in the audience. Um, so I want to open it up for, for any questions. So if anyone has a question, uh, just raise your hand or drop, drop your questions in the uh, command, companion channel. And in the meantime, the, uh, the, two, the three of us can just keep, keep talking. So I have, I have a lot of. Well, I've actually, I'm, I'm, I've got a, a terrible cold, and no worries, I was tested, so nothing, uh, nothing COVID related. Um, <laughs> but you do, you, you might hear that I'm a bit more nasal than I that I usually am. So uh, apologies for that. But then of course That's the fine. yeah, um, just regarding your plans for uh, 2022, are you guys? Uh, planning on attending any of the, uh, the trade shows? Are you guys uh, going to Superbooth in May? Or? Uh, Superbooth, uh, yeah. We, we will attend this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, previously uh, our uh, distributor from uh, Germany uh, was attending for us. Great, But yeah. this year, yeah. We do have a lot of surprises. Oh, uh, interesting. For the upcoming, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, you guys are you, you guys do do lay down a lot of teases here. That's a good, that's a great thing. Yeah. Let's say our PCB manufacturer work hard these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, keep, our, keep pick and place, our pick and place machine work uh, very very hard now. Oh, great, great, great. Well, the moment you guys have something that you can share, make sure that you uh, loop me in, and I'll uh, make sure that you. Uh, to make to, to to post it to this uh, to this group of people as well. No, that's great, okay. superb. And um, yeah, and then in regards to any 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 other plans for twenty twenty two, because we are of course uh, reaching the end of this year. Uh, but do you guys see yourself traveling uh, to the US or to other places as well, or will it primarily for be now. Uh, yeah? For now, uh, yeah. a super booth, I think. Yeah. Uh, maybe in Opcon, uh, but uh, that's it for now. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, and of course things can still change because of the the evolving yeah, yeah. situation, of course, <laughs> which is one of the yeah, it's always that. Oh, yeah. So it depends I've, I've... on the, the COVID version. Yeah, yeah. We're now it... there is new variant. Yeah, so yeah. right now we're at Om Omicron, and then we can also we can still go until Omega, right? So <laughs> yeah, we have time. We okay. have time. So I actually I actually booked some flights to the US for January yesterday, but I'm still I'm still convinced if that's going to happen. It's 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 crazy, right? So right now it is unfortunately. Um, so one of the things I always uh, offer the people that I that I interview is because I've been able to ask you guys so many questions, um, but then of course it could be that you have a question for me as well. So if if you do have a question, uh, well this is your moment to uh, take your revenge. Uh, we we usually uh, <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. Yeah. I'll think uh, about that. You, you, uh, we always interested in uh, in our user and uh, our customer base. Yeah. Uh, you as a user, what do you are um, focused on right now? Like what so, you want to buy? <laughs> so for me, the next thing I'm probably gonna buy is a is. Well, I'm still considering either to use a standalone mixer, like a, a desktop mixer, or to invest in a, a really multi-channel uh, Eurorack mixer. And I still haven't decided on that yet. So that like might the be the one next from one. Uh, WMD. Uh, which one is that? Let me have a look at the it. performance uh, mixer. I think. Oh, let's see. Let's I see. have it. Uh, it's amazing. I haven't seen that yet. Let's see. Uh, Eurorack modules. And then you've got... Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, I was probably thinking about something a bit smaller, but this does seem to have its eight channels. So it, I, I would probably be looking at something like this with eight channels, but maybe not as extended as this, because this is how many HP? Let's see. Plenty. Plenty. Yeah, it's, it's very big. It's yeah, very 40 big. HP. Wow. Yeah. Um, so probably something like that. that that's, that's probably going to be my next purchase that I'm going to be working on. Okay, amazing. Because yeah, I've, got, I've got some nice, I've got some nice, I've got some nice drum uh, sounds coming in and I've got some, I've got some nice voices. And I really, really want to tie them together in a, um, in a nice mixer of sorts, so I'm either considering getting something like a Mackie mixer, like a standalone one, or something yeah. like a well, uh, the performance mixer. It does look great, and we 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 did have Alex from WMD on the show. Uh, when was it? Uh, a, a few? Well, it's probably going to be two months yeah. back. I, I'm assuming yeah. they have an amazing, amazing products. Oh, absolutely, and. Uh, yeah. And he's a great guy Very as well. Much. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, well, um, we don't have any questions from the audience right now, which is uh, so apparently everything that we've talked about is very clear to everyone, <laughs> which is always a great thing. 
Um, so that being said, um, I, again, guys, uh, Morty, Dekel, I do want to thank you so much for uh, for joining me for this uh, this show today. Um, yeah, any any closing comments? Any closing thoughts? Um, no, thank you for inviting us. Always a pleasure, and um, yeah, it's been my honor to have you on the show, and uh, we'll be in touch. And as I said. Um, I'll be working on some of the uh, videos for some of the modules uh, going forward for you. And um, this has not been the last time you guys have been on this show. Let's uh, make sure that that is it. That is it. <laughs> Great. Then I would say, well, uh, thanks everyone for uh, for tuning in. Uh, whether you're listening to this from a recording or if you're listening to this live, this has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse. Uh, make sure to um, join our uh, Discord server. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For now, I would say thanks everyone for listening. And uh, please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll uh, catch each other next time. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Cheers.